And my name's Craig Gribble. I've, uh, I've been umpiring since I was 12 or 13 as well. Uh, I uh, was an international umpire for about 10 years and uh, moved into the umpires management sort of area. Done quite a bit along the way locally, but more uh, internationally around the sort of late 2000s, about 2008, 2009. Uh, started off at a Junior World Cup and then sort of uh, uh, worked through, I was, I was at the London Olympics, a uh, couple of Champions Trophy, the World Cup last year and been appointed to Rio for 2016. Hi, I'm Jo Cumming I'm from New Zealand. Um, I am on our National League panel um, and have also uh, just started on an international um, stage as well as of last year. Hello, my name is Anna Billing and I am from New Zealand. Oh. Hi, I'm Lani Jackman. I am also from New Zealand. Hey guys, um, I just thought I'd take a few minutes to talk to you about the, uh, the, the match that we've just seen over there. Just, just, just as a starting point, uh, what I want to say to you is sometimes uh, you know, the first match at the end of a tournament or what pop might perceive to be the sort of lower level match of the day, it's really easy for um, people to fall into a trap whereby they think, um, you know, this game's a bit below me, or I'd rather be tucked up in bed, or it's raining, or it's cold. But I want to tell you, you guys were excellent, right? That was, I thought that was an excellent game. So I've written a whole lot of notes here, which, are, which is more prompts for me. Um, and these are very much kind of, you know, development coaching points, not, not sort of criticisms of, of what you did out there, because that's my starting point, right? I was really impressed with what, what you did. How did you guys think, by the way? Good, okay, pretty good. What, what do you think, Anna? I, I felt more comfortable today when I was umpiring, uh, which was good. And there was a, a, a decision on my part to enjoy and to relax, and definitely my preparation for the match, um, I, was, I was focusing on that, yeah. and focusing on being prepared and, and yeah. um, performing well. So. so how was it different from the other day? If you said it was better, I knew what to expect okay. from the game, so I could prepare that way. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, yeah, obviously I had my first um, match on Thursday, yeah. and so I, I um, had a taste of the speed and intensity and <coughs> all the different uh, things that go on. Yeah. And today I could I could reflect on that, and then okay. today I could, yeah, Excellent. prepare and deliver. Did you did you see Anna the other day? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I think you looked a lot more at ease and relaxed today compared to the other day. So that was really yeah, it was yeah noticeable. Yeah, because cool. sometimes it's it's a matter of just getting the hang of the speed of the game, different skills, the way mm. people mm. you know different things carry the ball. I mean that's that's the area that you guys are heading into as well. You know, if you if a, a, a new team to the to the country comes here or you go away on a tour or something like that or e even going away to a different province or something like that just sometimes there's team strategies and that change so it's a it's a feeling that you need mm. to get the hang of you know yeah. that, that sort of difference what about you Lani good okay not too bad um I think Brilliant. Kind of this oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, no I definitely think um I like I don't know I actually enjoyed it today like I had Samoa in their first game and it was almost like we kind of had to coach our way through the game yeah. and they came out and they played like so much better as a team and yeah. it was nice to kind of yeah. Yeah, just enjoy it and let them play hockey. Cool. Mm. Okay, well let, let's unpack just a couple of these kind of aspects. If I could <coughs> sort of um, start with you Anna, mm -hmm. um, what I've done here is just drawn what I call some hot spots around the field. Okay, that, that, so that's the, that's the sort of around your circle here and all, also in particular along this kind of sign line area. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to think about is the sort of package and the profile that you kind of present to the players, to the spectators and to a TV audience or whatever in terms of your sort of body language and the way you're presenting your decisions, which will include things like, you know, whistle expression and tone and all that sort of stuff as well. Okay. And think of it from the point of view, if you were a player on the field, how much uh, would your actions or behaviour be determined by the fact that you knew that there was an umpire uh, close to you or breathing down your neck? And how would, how would the player get the sort of vibe of that? Okay. And, and so it's not an easy question to answer. I don't necessarily want the answer at the moment. I want you to think about 
how players' uh, behaviour and how they go about their business is influenced by your presence on the field. And, and, and it's highlighted in these highly visible, you know, kind of areas when, especially around the circle and stuff, right, when, when everything's kind of mm -hmm. looking at you. If I was to say to you, I'd, I'd like to see sort of a bit more energy and stuff, what, what does that, um, how does that feel if, if I made that comment? More energy. More energy, a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more sort of mixing it up. What, what, what would that feel like for you? Ah, uh, well, I guess in um, in sort of crunchy situations, yeah, when um, maybe something's big happening or, or the game is is sort of as you said before um, rumbling, yeah, and the players the are getting sort of uneasy oil, yeah. and saying, yeah, yeah, and um, I I need to be to think about how. My presence on the field and the way I project myself on the field, yeah. um, how that affects the game and the yeah. players. Yeah. Not and uh, I need to think about some ways I can change that. Yeah. So that they um, feel me there and that I'm I'm in control. Yeah. And they aren't. They aren't. They can't get away with um, being naughty or. Sure. Or, or, or um, cheeky, yeah. or grumpy, okay. swings of sticks. Is, yeah. is, is that what you mean? Yeah, it is what I mean. So hold that thought. Now, meanwhile, down the other end, Lani, um, I've put, you know, the, the, the package that you present in this whole sort of anticipation moving into those high sort of uh, uh, visible areas is excellent, all right? So it's really obvious to me you've done a lot of work in there. But along the same kind of lines, what, 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 um, when you're presenting yourself in this part of the field to what can be a packed circle, 20 odd sort of people all trying to, you know, sort of, um, you know, shoulder to shoulder, uh, if I said to you, I'd like you to mix it up a little bit more in that department, mm -hmm. what springs to mind for you? <clears throat> um... Well, I'm quite relaxed in my circle. Um, so probably for me it would be more <clears throat> like direct stuff. Like, not get angry, but <clears throat> if I don't like something in my circle, I think I need to show it more. Right, okay. I'm, oh, I'm not everyone's friend, but mm. I like. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just. Yeah, I feel like I'm like, you know, I like go out and do my thing. Okay, but... can you just stand up for a minute? Yeah. And if you if you uh, imagine just wearing your circle, you you use your <coughs> hands and uh, body language just to speak to us for a moment in the way you think you go. How about I would it. usually. Yes, yes. How you did today and usually do it. Um, so what's what's the body language? I'm quite palms. I'm quite open. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, just here. Yeah. I I kind of. Yeah. I'm not like jotting yet. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yeah, just take yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, bring it round. So, so the, 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 um, way, the way we yeah. describe that is like sort of facilitating, uh, trying to help the players <coughs> have, a, have a nicer game kind of approach, which yeah. is excellent, okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. However, one of, the, one of the things about this is our strengths are also our weaknesses, all right? So in times of, so what, what, what in certain situations is calm and relaxed, can be, doesn't quite fit the bill in particular context where we do need to be a bit more direct, right? Yeah. So if our normal mode of operation maybe is a more open palm assisting, mm. and, and maybe our movements are more sort of gliding, you know, like this, yeah. can be mixed up into a, hey, because that, that shift in body language is what has the impact to people, right? So our normal relaxed mode open palms converts to, excuse me, mm. changes the whole sort of vibe of the situation. Yeah. And it's the variation from your normal mode of operation mm -hmm. clicking into another mode that has the impact. That's what makes somebody go, oh, you know, and, and, and you have a chance then of, of sort of changing behaviour. Is All that right? what you were talking about for me in these... Areas here. Yeah. So what I need to do. Yeah. So the reason I sort of converted to Lani was because I think um, if I think about where she was maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. you know, I was kind of talking to her like I'm talking to you now. So I sort of feel a 
transition kind of thing. And you'll relate to this as well, Joe. Mm. You know, as uh, you know, someone who's sort of been through this, trying to just sort of discover who you are, you know, and how you influence people by the, this this group of you know sort of uh, tricks that we use, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. So if there's one message, you guys, I think it's the it's that. Um, uh, using small interventions, maybe one or two a quarter, just to chuck in there, just to show that uh, you've got more sort of up your sleeve, all right? It keeps people guessing a little bit more, and it, it, it gives them the feeling that you're watching, but you're also sort of giving things the attention to detail that sort of needs. It, it builds player trust and all that kind of thing. A whole lot of sort of words and concepts that... You know, if you, if you analyse it too much, it gets too tricky. But if you look at the overall thing, it's how the small things feed into the common good. Okay, and I just uh, I just want to hone in on you for a minute, um, but you're going to relate to this as well, Lani, right? Because everything I'm saying to, to Anna also applies. Yep. What a, what a, there was, a, there was a, a time in the game, it was probably in the second quarter, yep. where it felt to me that uh, there was a little bit of uh, tackling and a bit of body play and a few things starting to happen, uh, you know, sorry, from one, from one of the teams. And uh, it's to do with understanding the game and how that sort of builds an intensity and then drops away, depending on um, you know score and tactics and who's on the field at any particular time or that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, what I want to ask you is, how how did you feel? I, I felt it more in that second quarter. Did you gauge the same kind of thing in terms of the overall feel of the game? Yes. During the, during the second quarter, the um, team, is this where they got sort of more upset? Not yeah, more upset, a little more, bit upset, a little bit yeah, of tackling kind of stuff. And it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um, so yeah, the first quarter was more standard, and then as the goals started to yeah. um, increase, yeah. then uh, come the second quarter, they were yeah. getting a bit, uh, bit upset about that, and yeah. definitely the whole approach to tackling I, I guess changed from it. Yeah, and there were several. Um, I think there was one here and then another one here. Yeah. And I, I remember I played advantage because that, I think that was the best thing to do in the situation. Okay. Um, but I was, I was, but you're talking about how the game ebbs and flows. Uh, is there a way to deal with that mm. that shows that I don't like it, but yeah, doesn't exactly. halt the game and make the flow of the game? Yeah. Yeah. Stop. So that's where you're at at the moment, eh? Just thinking about how you can mm. manage that process a bit better. Mm. Yeah. I like it cool. when the game flows. Yeah. yeah, sure. Did you gauge the same thing, Lani? Because was it, it was more yeah. down Anna's end, wasn't it? The heat was on her end a bit more at that point. So standing on the yeah. halfway line, you get the same vibe? Yeah. Like okay. frustration. Yeah. But it wasn't like at anyone in particular. I think, yeah, just like the game. You just need to. Yeah. Yeah, they started. Yeah, the other team started to get a few goals, and yeah. some were just like, oh, you know, kind of here we go again. Yeah, a little bit. And sideline, Joe. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> some, yeah, similar sort of thing. You could, yeah, kind of feel that kind of lifting a bit. Um, and I think that kind of relates what to Gribbs, what Gribbs was saying before about um, you know how you how you engage with the players and the teams in that sort sort of situation. Because okay. you both say that you you know you felt that kind of. Rise in intensity or rise in you know the offences that were happen that mm. were happening. Um, but yeah, it's showing mm. showing that you have yeah. you knowing that's mm. happening and that you are making that acknowledgement for the game. Yeah. I think is that what you're? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Where you're going, Grace? Yeah. So so what I want you to think about here, Anna, is um, uh, a, a sort of a control ladder approach where we say down here there's a situation that happens in hockey like a foot. Mm -hmm there will be a response from the umpire for a low level infringement. It will probably just be a normal old sort of free hit. Yeah. Okay? And then we can take all those things that happen in a game all the way up to the top to a, a rugby tackle um, and mm -hmm. say there's a, probably a response to that. That could be a red card. Mm -hmm. and, and in the middle here, there'll be a whole other sequence of umpire interventions from calling over the captain and, you know, loud whistles or penalty corners or, or everything we do in terms of going out of business. Sure. Now, through your development, you will uh, understand this control ladder well and you'll know if it hits a foot what the response is. Mm. But the sh here's the shift. Here's the key to everything, you guys. 
when when you're stuck in the control ladder, you know, sort of formula, it starts to let you down in high level games mm -hmm. because it's a snapshot that you're dealing with. So foot, therefore free hit, mm -hmm. which is excluding the context of the game, which in high level games is more important than the snapshot, right? Mm -hmm. So if a game is boiling, the scores are, clo uh, are close, the, the coaches upset, mm -hmm. um, the tackling is deteriorating, these are game situations uh, which are, are carrying on as well uh, as that ball hits the foot, okay. right? Cool. And what we tend to do as umpires as we're coming through is we're so keen on getting the foot right, mm -hmm. you know, and we miss the, the more global sort of issues that are going on. Okay. So what I want you to start thinking about is a shift from the control ladder approach to a more game management approach mm -hmm. where if, if your energy or, or expression or something is required from you in order to manage the game, mm -hmm. the, the little foot is the vehicle for you to come in and provide that. All right? So maybe it just touches the foot, mm -hmm. okay? which in some situations would be free hit. Right. But because you're now looking at the context and the tackling's not going so good and you know there's uh, other things going on, this one might be mm -hmm. And again, players feel your energy, they feel your expression, and it might be mm -hmm. enough for a couple to turn around going, what's going on? But it kind of resets the game at this point. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the little foot, which you know, in a lot of cases would be just a small whistle, has now turned into an opportunity for you to manage the overall game. Mm -hmm. All right? So on our little diagram here, what was a foot going to free hit under the control ladder approach, it's actually a foot going to a more higher level of intervention, whatever that might be, mm -hmm. because that's what the game needs at this time. Mm -hmm. mm. Alright? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're shifting from uh, small windows, like clips that we watch, you know, just to build a database of, of decision making, through to a more game management context where yeah. if the game stopped, or you need to blow the whistle, you have full license to do whatever you like. You don't have to stick with the control ladder, mm -hmm. small thing, small intervention. Mm -hmm. So you go, small thing, yes, mm -hmm. this is my opportunity. Mm -hmm. The game needs a bigger thing, I'm yeah. going to mm, provide that. So it's a, the context around the, yep. the incident that you've applied the rule for. Exactly. It's so, different depending on the game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that will be different, like you and three individuals. It will mm. be different with two t different teams yeah. playing. It'll be different. These, yeah, that. these two teams yeah. could be playing. If it's five nil, it'll be different to if it's nil or when they meet yeah. again next week. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So yep. it, okay. it yeah. comes and goes on you. So when you were saying it up, you know, around the field, you weren't happy with this and you weren't happy with that. What can you do? Mm -hmm. You're you're thinking. You're almost waiting for something big to happen mm -hmm. so you can come in and nail it. Yeah. Right? I'm saying to you come up with something innovative that lets the game know you're, you're in, you mean business here, mm -hmm. even though that big thing hasn't presented hasn't itself. Yet. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, I think, something important for me to not understand, but think about, and think about the different ways I can, yeah. I can do that. And this particular aspect is a, you know, a much more high level, you know, mm -hmm. sort of approach to things. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna, um, come up with, you know, start talking to someone who's just developing the control act, because they still need to know that when someone does a bad tackle, it's a penalty corner and a yellow card. They're still mm. discovering those things. They may not have ever blown a penalty straight before, you know? Mm. So how can you say to them, you know, do all this other stuff before they've actually tried yeah. all those control all the other things, things yeah. out? So then they get to a point like you're at when you mm -hmm. say, look, I know how to do everything, but actually today it didn't kind of work right. properly, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so we say, okay, take that model, use it as a foundation, and then let's, let's explore, you know, sort of a more, mm -hmm. or translate that into a more game management approach. Well, I think one way I tried to do that today um, was there was a player and um, a attacker and defender, and the attacker collided. Well, had a tackle with the defender, yeah. and her stick got caught on on the on the shin pad. Right. Okay. And yeah. so what she did, the poor defender was just standing there, and she yeah. was just pulling on her stick. Right. And and the ball had gone, and nothing like they were it's coming to blows or anything. Yeah. So I yeah. sort of kept my eye on it while yeah. watching up here, yeah. and I was thinking, how can I let 
confused. Let people know that I've seen that. Yeah. So everybody thinks, oh, Anna's, Anna's onto it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but obviously it can't be anything too drastic because nothing too big happened. Right. She just got quite yeah. um, aggressive and just, just yanking her stick. Yeah. It was, it was kind what, of funny. What could she have done? What, what options are open to her? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's probably a you know a mm. hundred things that you could have done, mm. um, but yeah, I think that's that's where the control ladder comes in handy, and that there's all those tools there. Mm. It's kind of picking or trying different ones in different situations to see what yeah. works. You know, whether you're just sort of wandered in towards it while the game is flowing on down mm. down Lanning's end, whether you you know stop time and just done a wee point or something afterwards. I don't. Yeah, it's kind of I suppose exploring those things and. Yeah. Then mm. being able to pull on them later and seeing what works next time, you know, because that's might work that time, it's not necessarily going to work the next yeah. time, but there's mm. a number of things. Anything spring to mind for you? Well, from memory, I think it went over the sideline, didn't it? Did it? Um, wasn't there a goal that was scored? Or was it a goal? Oh, God, I don't know, she was walking back. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I actually, I, and I, then talked it was to, I talked to her, I said, you know, back there you're doing this. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. But, yeah. Don't, don't, but I can try something different next small. time. Right? Exactly. Mm. But yeah. Annie, you can stop the game. That's true. Yeah, they've passed it on, they've taken the free hit. Shh, 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 shh. top. Stop. True. Mm. Walk in. Mm. Hey, mm. take it easy, please, you know. Mm. Are you okay? You know, the one that got, mm. you know, take it easy. Sometimes the, yeah. sometimes the game needs a, a rest. Mm. The, the best thing you can do in an intense sort of game for, for both teams in some situation is find a way for everyone just to stand up, but maybe the first time the defenders stood up properly for five minutes <laughs> yeah. if they've been under the pump. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're not, you're not um, making stuff up, you're, but your intention behind your intervention is this game needs a five second rest. Mm. Everyone's going to benefit from this. Mm. So, you know, sh -sh -sh, you know, take it easy, please. What, you know, move around. Mm. Come back into your open, and then shh, get the game going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and something's happened in the game, and it's asking for you to come up with something that's just going to help everybody mm -hmm. reset and and start again with a fair sort of platform. Just because mm -hmm. they've taken a free hit quickly, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you wouldn't want to do it with her about to shoot for goal, no. you know. Do you know what I mean? They they, they <laughs> yeah, do a back yeah, pass yeah. or something <laughs> like that. And you're saying, hang on a minute, I can help this game here, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you come in with some innovative, just creative way to, you know, mm. sort of help the game, help reset the game. Yeah. Yeah? You don't have to be bound by, you know, sort of the, what the rules say about this stuff. Game management is about good people providing, or help, you know, solutions to complex situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do whatever you Mixing can. It up. Mm. Do whatever you like. <clears throat> mm. Yeah? I guess it was almost like Samoa, they had like, how many PCs and they're a bit like under the pump mm -hmm. and it's like you know you can see them running up to go take a free hit at the top and you're like oh god here we go you're just yeah. gonna pass it back and then we go yeah, yeah. so maybe yeah you, you do them a well. massive you do yeah. them a massive favor just to slow that whole thing yeah because they get, get caught up in the spiral of it as mm. well you yeah. know mm. thinking they have to take it as fast as what the opposition is because that's what they're doing because yeah. Yeah. Mm. the game is sort of spiraling along mm. resetting it means right let's just take a step back here you know Right. Do you reckon that helps, Anna? Uh, that... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay. So, so I think uh, so. We've talked about a couple of almost like sort of individual, uh, you know, development kind of points, which I reckon is important. You have to, you have to, um, in the, in the background, you know, have a sort of a, a, a professional development sort of goal. If, you know, where you want to head to if you want to get better. Mm -hmm. Some people think that just, um, you know, if you go out and umpire 20 games, uh, you're going to be better at the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I know umpires that have been umpiring for 20 years and they've got mm -hmm. worse, all right? So <laughs> frequency is doesn't help, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's developing the craft is the key thing. And you can develop your craft on a, a kid's practice game mm -hmm. if you go out there with a purpose and something in mind specifically to do it. Right, so I say to people, you know, if you if you want to get the hang of sort of anticipation or positioning or something like that, you don't do that on a high level game where your where your decisions are going to be questioned and you're under pressure. How are you ever going to be able to dedicate enough, um, you know, sort of processing power to that? Say, go and offer yourself at a school practice game where your decision making is not going to be questioned, and with the specific purpose of exploring some new 
parts of the field. Isn't that the place to do it? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some people say, oh, I don't do a school game because they've got this you know, idea about where they're at, are missing professional development opportunities mm -hmm. Um, because they, you can do a school game or a low level game as long as you've got the right sort of personal goals that you want to get out of it. Yeah. Okay? okay. So that the, the individual stuff is important, all right? And, and, and sort of taking this away and packaging it up and thinking about how you know we're gonna do it um, better next time. But the, the the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the idea of of a pair of umpires, all right? Two umpires. What, what looks at the, in the first instance is one umpire doing one end and one umpire doing the other. However, if it's done well, mm -hmm. there's a, a, a one plus one equals two and a little bit, a sort of a, a synergy or connection that uh, you get a bit more kind of out of it, all right? And I want you to think, if I was to say to you two, did you maximize that sort of synergy today? Did, were you connected in a way that, um, uh, people on the sidelines sort of thought these two are going well, or was it a little bit old in my end, you do your end? Have you got a feel for you at with that? I don't know. The I think we did. Yes. And then there's also times where yeah. you can do more. You always improve. Yeah. 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 For example, um, there was this, yeah, this is an obvious one, there was a foot on the way in. Oh yeah, it was like a goalie foot fit, and I was like, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And he looked up, and I was like, mm. it's, it's a penalty corner, um, yeah. so it's an obvious <clears throat> one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I, I mean, I suppose, <laughs> you know, in terms, and I, I, I suppose the, the the key to this is not we're trying to sort of masquerade or, or do a funny dance at the halfway. On, you know, I, I, I don't like that sort of stuff. Yeah. But it's how we can you know, come up with um, opportunities <coughs> to get people thinking that we we have this connection, you know. Mm -hmm. Now we have a, a very strange thing in hockey whereby, um, you know, let's just say, Anna, the, the ball's down here in your end, mm -hmm. okay, and let's say it clicks off a couple of sticks and then gets cleared over the back line here, mm -hmm. down Lani's end, mm -hmm. right? right? Yep. Let's just say. Yep. Yep. Now the slightly strange thing in, in, in hockey umpiring is, the person who um, who's, was right there and gathered the information on whether this is a 16 yard hit or a long corner was two metres away. Mm -hmm. The person whose job it is to signal it was 60 metres down the other end of the field yep. and probably looking in the other direction. Yep. Right? <laughs> yeah. We've all done that. <laughs> okay, so yeah. if for credibility's sake at least, even Lani, if you know that it's a 16 or a long corner, the yeah. obvious way of sort of marketing your pairing mm -hmm. is for you, Anna, to translate the information that you know mm -hmm. as a confirmation to Lani that yes, this is a 16. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you, you're just assuming. Now, she goes long corner, you're going to be going, oh, hang on a minute, um, I thought mm -hmm. it was a 16. And in fact, you are the one with the information. Yeah. Right? Mm. Likewise, you'd be a mug. To, yeah. to, you know, <laughs> award the thing without, uh, you'd feel so much safer if Anna had said, yep, it's a 16, or yep, it's a long yeah. corner, you know? Yeah. So, um, these are opportunities, there's another one when it gets cleared over the sideline here, with the same thing. Mm -hmm. Anna, you've got the information, Lani, you're standing here with the job of saying who's hidden it is, mm -hmm. but you haven't really got the right information. Yeah. yeah. So a little sort of visual kind of thing, it's a hit this way, mm -hmm. just, ah, yes, good, you know, just, just, just sort of, there's a natural thing that sort of folds out from that that these two umpires are not just doing an end each. There's a lots of years of of um, uh, of uh, I don't know sort of um, overlap whereby they're both thinking the same way and their transfer of information is going the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guess what? There's a little um, there's a little plus here as well because let's just say. <coughs> You won't want to tell the coaches these tricks, of course. Keep <laughs> some things to yourself. Um, but let's just say there's something that happens in the middle of the field here, you know, going towards Lani, right? And she blows a loud whistle and puts her arm up. And Anna, you join in with her as, mm -hmm. she, as she blows with a signal. Mm -hmm. 
the people who have been looking down, watching you connected the whole time, saying these two things are good, you know, mm. going well, when there's a bit of a 50-50 in the middle of the field and both of you go the same way again, you don't even know why she's blowing. <laughs> All you've recognised is this, uh, this is an opportunity to market your pairing. Mm -hmm. You two are connected, you join within a free hit, so if there's any knockers out there, they go, oh, well, both of them thought it was that way, it must have been, you know, and, and yeah. things sort of blow over. All right, because there are parts of the field when you're blocked, when something happens quickly or whatever, where you know we, we got to admit we get, <coughs> we get things wrong as well. You know, mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to do is minimise the risk here. We're trying to still keep player trust just by sort of working together and and giving that visible sort of thing that you you guys are trying as best you can get, to get sort of decisions right via yeah. a connection and a, and a sort of a, an information transfer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. and that is a sort of a high level, I suppose, development point when you're when you're um, coming through into you know into maybe uh, you know within New Zealand in terms of your context here and where you sit, mm -hmm. and then moving into the sort of international arena. Or you can give exactly the same advice to a under thirteen or under fifteen or under eighteen umpire because as they move up the ranks through those junior tournaments, even. The, the, the pairing, I think, becomes more and more important, mm. all right? And in terms of marketing yourself with that pairing, you want to be the umpire that can umpire with anybody, can umpire any team, any context, rain, hail or shine, doesn't matter. You go out there and you provide that sort of platform for you know, individual high performance and the pairing, all right? And there's some umpires around the world that don't, for example, umpire particularly well with other umpires and they're difficult at tournaments because the number of games that they're eligible for are, are, is restricted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the more that you're open to this, the more that the TDN umpires manager feel that you're, you're interchangeable right across the panel, the games, the draw, the more sort of personal um, gain you're going to get from that and you're going to be a person that people want at a tournament, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, okay. So. Think about that sort of connection, synergy, those sort of concepts and the areas of the field and the particular situations where, you know, you can actually, uh, you know, present yourself as one plus one equals two and a bit. That's, that's the key to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions on that? No worries. You can kind of almost do it over here as well, eh? Like, if there's like something going on over here. I can kind of come so in if this is if, going in a circle. Yeah, so if, if this was, are you talking about <coughs> Lani here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, the, the key to this part of the field here is that when a, when a defender is taking the ball away from this umpire, typically mm. the ball will be blocked from this person's view, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. And again, so, um, so even you could be actually be further away here, Lani, down the field, but the ball will be presenting itself in front of the player to you. Yeah. yeah. And yet this person could well be closer, but they're blocked by their body. Mm. So what does common sense say? <coughs> um, you know, as the ball is moving out of these defensive parts of the field away from this, there's a sixth sense between you two because you've been connected so beautifully the whole way. <laughs> it's just natural for you to pick that up, Lani. Yeah. The other thing about you know co-umpire support here is that <coughs> Anna could have been under the pump here for the last five minutes, blowing five penalty corners. Finally, it gets out of her circle and starts to get released, <laughs> and she hears you blow a free hit that way, and she's like, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, so there's a sort of yeah. almost a, an offload of the pressure that she's been mm -hmm. under that you're going to take it on board, you know? Yeah. So there's so many synergies here we can sort of explore, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, now, if you open your mind up to this stuff, you can start drawing all sorts of places around the field where you can work this to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.